So I want to begin with a clinical scenario. So patient comes into your clinic, seven-year-old male, low-grade upper tract urothelial carcinoma with occasional hematuria, biopsy proven, past medical history, coronary artery disease, hypertension, chronic kidney disease, his creatinine is 1.7, his uh, EGFR is 40, um, and you can look from the scan, he has an atrophic right kidney, um, and unfortunately in the left, you can see in the renal pelvis, the TCC, you get a nuclear scan, it's 25%, 75%. So now you're sitting here realizing that if you do the gold standard of treatment and extirpative therapy, most likely this patient's gonna be leading down the path of dialysis with a life expectancy less than five years. So what do you do and how do you counsel him? We have very little information available to us today regarding the natural history of upper tract urothelial carcinoma, and I think that's the purpose of this presentation. Background, an estimated five to 10% of urothelial malignancies present in the upper urinary tract. In general, the primary form for therapy of non for non-metastatic upper tract is uh, extirpative therapy, including ablation. In the last few decades, the incidence of upper tract has risen with an associated stage migration towards more localized tumors, as we've seen, as we've seen in renal cell carcinoma. And the median age of diagnosis of upper tract is actually 75 years old, so we're dealing with an elderly population. Patients may not be candidates for radical surgery, as is the case with our patient, due to poor baseline renal function and concern for progression dialysis. Radical surgery is associated with risks, and patients may not be able to tolerate it, so often patients may not be eligible for segmental or endoscopic or extirpative therapy. Unfortunately, there is an absence of information regarding the optimal management for patients with localized upper tract urothelial carcinoma who are poor candidates for gold standard extirpative therapy or endoscopic management. So this is the fact for both the AUA and the NCCN guidelines. So the question is, for those without symptoms, initial conservative approaches may be employed with consideration of systemic therapy upon sy symptomatic progression. So if you have someone who you're following conservatively, they begin to bleed, can you use embolization, can you use radiation? The strategy of watchful waiting with treatment upon distant progression has been adapted in other malignancies, including prostate cancer. And in upper tract, the strategy could have the benefit of avoiding surgery while allowing treatment with chemotherapy or neuroimmunotherapy agents should disease progress. So I know upper tract urothelial carcinoma is different than prostate cancer, it's different than renal cell, but the question is we know now we have second line immunotherapeutic agents that are effective against um, upper tract or urothelial carcinomas and they have a lower um, uh, profile of harm to the patient. So in the future, they may be available to us. So we sought to determine the outcomes of patients with upper tract with non-definitive therapy, a question that has not been addressed. We did this by interrogating two population databases. The first was the surveillance epidemiology and uh, end results, or the SEER database, and the other was the national cancer database, the NCDB. So the SEER database is a population-based database that allows for cancer-specific analysis. However, it does not have data regarding comorbidities and therapeutic modalities such as radiotherapy or chemotherapy. And the NCDB has surrogates for comorbidities um, and information regarding receipt of chemo and radiotherapy. However, it does not have data regarding cancer-specific mortality. So each of them have a plus and a minus. So we started with the SEER database. We assessed the overall survival and cancer-specific outcomes for patients with localized upper tract in a cohort of patients who did not receive any form of surgical therapy. We assessed the risk factors for disease-specific death, and we estimate the three-year cancer-specific mortality. Our methods, so we interrogated the SEER database uh, that identified patients between 1973 and 2013. This represents 28% of the U.S. population. All these patients were confirmed to have kidney pelvic ur um, ureteric urothelial carcinoma. Um, they're using the ICD code 03. We had many exclusions, non-localized uh, histology was not confirmed, unknown survival stage or location. And in fact, once we did this, there was a cohort of patients that were under the age of uh, 60 that we felt as though we needed to um, remove from our cohort of um, urothelial tract uh, upper tract urothelial carcinoma who were not treated with definitive therapy because we were concerned that there was uh, coding errors because usually these patients based on age alone would be given aggressive therapy. So here's our data. In total, we found 8,304 patients who had localized upper tract urothelial carcinoma in the SEER database. We had 633 of these patients who did not receive definitive therapy. 
So there was a 7.6% group within the SEER database that received non-extirpative therapy or were followed. I'm, just, sorry, I'm sorry, let me go up one. It's the age of diagnosis, as you can imagine, the non-definitive or not, the, the treatment uh, lacking group was they were older and uh, their tumors were in fact smaller. Of that group that was non-definitive, 69.5% uh, actually had a grade associated. And when you went ahead and looked at that data, 43% had low grade and 56% had high grade upper tract urothelial carcinoma. So then we did our analysis on this cohort. So we looked at median overall survival, comparing those who had surgery to those who did not have surgery. And as you can imagine, the surgical cohort had a longer overall survival of 7.9 years versus watchful waiting of 1.9 years. We then looked at the disease-specific survival, and the three-year disease-specific survival again showed the surgical cohort at 92.4%. But interestingly to us, the watchful waiting cohort was actually 73.7%, three-year disease-specific survival. We then wanted to look at actually the cancer-specific mortality, and in order to do this, we used a different tool. The nielsen Allen estimate was used to assess the cumulative incidence of cancer-specific mortality. The Kaplan-Meier curves can overestimate risk by failing to account for competing risk of death from other causes. So when we applied this tool to our data set, the three and five year cumulative incidence of cancer specific mortality when accounting for competing risk of death was 26% and 42%. So the risk of death to someone with an untreated urothelial carcinoma was only 26% at three years. We then did a subset analysis. So we looked at those patients who did not have definitive therapy and asked the question, what was the effect of grade on their overall survival? And that's in this panel. And as again, you can imagine, those patients who had high grade disease, they had a shorter overall survival of 1.5 years versus low grade at 3.4 years. And then similarly, in the disease specific survival, high grade uh, was 65.1% and low grade was 82.9% survival at three years. We also did a multivariant model hazard ratio analysis to look at predictors of worse survival, and um, age and high tumor grade fell out uh, as uh, indicators of worse prognosis. So then we did a similar analysis on the NCDB database. We were looking at overall survival with the following stratifications. We looked at grade, Charleston comorbidity score, single or multi-agent chem chemotherapy or radiation. Remember, in the NCDB database, we get it, we actually have information regarding those who received chemotherapy and radiation versus SEER database. And cancer-specific survival was not available in the NCDB. So the NCDB database identified patients between 2004 and 2014 represents 70% of all cancer cases from over 1,500 cancer programs in the United States. Again, we used a similar, co similar code, so we're looking at renal, pelvic, ureteric, upper tract, urothelial carcinoma. Our exclusions, again, uh, unknown surgical status, not histologically confirmed, unknown survival, unknown stage, and unknown location. So our cohort fell out. We actually had 38,910 patients with upper tract urothelial carcinoma in this database. 3,157 were managed conservatively, so 10.9% of the cohort. The watchful waiting cohort was associated with older age and female sex, and for the first time, we actually were able to identify information on initial treatment with chemo or radiation in a group that did not receive extirpative therapy. And in that cohort, so 9.3% in the watchful waiting group received chemotherapy, 6.3% received radiation therapy. Again, we looked at overall survival, and similarly, as to the SEER database, when comparing non-operative to surgical, the median survival for those who did not have surgery was two years, and those who did receive surgery um, was 5.6 years. The three-year overall survival, non-operative was 40.2%, and operative was 66.6%. And if we did subset analysis again, looking at high grade and low grade, again, not surprisingly, those with uh, low grade disease had a median survival of 3.4 years versus 1.8 years in those men and women with um, low grade disease, I'm sorry, with high grade disease, and the three year survival, high grade was 38% and low grade 53%. We also asked the question, what was the effect of the Charleston score on patients? And um, not surprisingly, those who had an increasing Charleston score also, so therefore, increasing morbidity had decreasing survivability. 
We also did a multivariant Cox proportion hazard analysis, looked at predictors of poor survival, and uh, what fell out as indicators of poor survival was older age, larger tumor, a higher Charleston score, male sex, those who had government insurance versus private, and those patients with lower income. Now, I mentioned we were able to get some information regarding chemotherapy and radiotherapy, and this is the non-definitive group, so you could imagine you don't want to operate, but can you do something else? So this was a cohort that had received either multi-agent, no chemotherapy or single agent, but all of these did not receive surgery, and uh, what we found was that chemotherapy had no associated benefit to overall survival in the group. When we did a similar analysis to radiotherapy, interestingly enough, radiotherapy was associated with a shorter overall survival. How could that be? I'm sure what the case is, is these are um, patients with uh, aggressive disease, not surgical candidates. You're, tr you're throwing the kitchen sink at them, radiation may be it, and basically they have poor survival. The limitations of the study is that this is population database. Each lacks information. NCDB does not have data regarding cancer-specific mortality. SEER does not have data regarding comorbidities. Tumor histology was not assessed under central pathology review, so we're subject to inter-observer disagreement. And the data is limited to pathologic diagnosis, so those patients who only had a radiologic diagnosis were not included in this study. But here's the summary. So you look at the SEER database, and let's look at median overall survival. It was 1.9 years. If you had high grade, it was 1.5, and it was as long as 3.4 in low grade. In the NCDB database, we found a similar number for overall survival of two years. High grade was 1.8 years, and again, low grade was 3.4 years. Disease-specific survival, we're not able to assess an NCDB, but the SEER database gave us a three-year disease-specific survival of 73.7. High grade was associated with 6.5, I'm sorry, 65.1%, but low grade was as high as 82.9%, and the three-year cancer-specific mortality was 26%. So, in conclusion, 8 to 11 percent of our patients in both databases had localized upper tract urothelial carcinoma that was managed without definitive therapy. The patients with localized upper tract urothelial carcinoma who were managed non-operatively may exhibit extended survival in select cases. The age of diagnosis and the tumor grade impact cancer-specific mortality. Of the patients with localized upper tract managed non-operatively from the NCDB database, 9.3% and 6.3% received chemotherapy and radiotherapy, respectively. XRT and chemotherapy may not have overall benefit, uh, survival benefit in this population, and further research is needed to define which borderline treatment candidates, candidates can be safely treated conservatively. So let's go back to that clinical scenario of our seven-year-old gentleman with a low-grade upper tract urothelial carcinoma with significant past medical history who has um, kidney, uh, chronic kidney disease and an atrophic right kidney. How can you counsel this patient? Is there more information that you can tell that patient? I think based on this study, we can now counsel the patient regarding conservative management and that there's a 20 to 25% risk of cancer-related death at three years. Thank you.